Hi everyone, welcome to Lola's Frugal Life. This is episode number 56. In this episode, I'm going to be talking to you about saving for an emergency fund. So please just stick around for a few quick words from our sponsor and we'll get right into the episode. Okay everyone, so today we're gonna be talking about emergency funds, but before we get into that, like I always do on my Monday episode, which is usually more like my um, main topic of the week that I'm kind of gonna be talking about, Um, I always like to give my frugal tip of the week. So this week, um, this one might be kind of like outdated, I'm thinking, because we only just started doing this around Christmas time. But um, my frugal tip of the week for this week was if you haven't already, to try the reusable plastic straws. And um, the reason I say that is because my kids um, kept wanting me to get the plastic straws. At one point it became like a really big thing all the kids were talking about and they didn't want um, turtles to get hurt from from uh, the disposable plastic straws ending up in the ocean and things like that and then you couldn't even get those kind of straws in the store anymore and they like to use straws to drink like smoothies or iced coffee or whatever so with teenagers in the house we would use a lot of plastic straws I don't know if that's typical for most families I probably wouldn't buy them I guess if I didn't have my kids but anyway Although we do use them sometimes for like, if you make like a like a mixed drink or something for fun, you might want to throw a straw in the glass. Um, but anyway, so, and I had heard at, at, at one time, I don't know if it was more that they just had like the metal straws. And um, I had heard that those were kind of like weird and they just felt weird when you tried to use them or whatever. But um, I wound up finding these plastic, reusable plastic straws on Amazon um, I guess around Christmas time, because I wound up giving them to my kids as like a little stocking stuffer or whatever, but um, just because I thought it was kind of funny because it was something that they kept asking for. So I got those, and um, they came with like a little brush that you like clean them with, and they work really great, and they really do um, function and feel just like the regular plastic straws that you would buy in like for like 99 cents in one of those big packs, like the color- colorful straws that you get for kids or whatever. Um, obviously they're a little sturdier than that but they work really great so I never have to buy straws anymore we washed them reused them and they worked out great so if you did try the metal ones and you didn't like those I would definitely recommend looking for the plastic ones if you can find them I mean they definitely have them on Amazon I would guess that they, they sell them in like stores like Target and Walmart and things like that but anyway the ones we got were really great so that's my frugal tip of the week so let's talk about emergency funds so I guess to start with, let's talk about what an emergency fund is. So an emergency fund is a separate bank account where you're gonna set aside money specifically to cover major unexpected expenses. So these might be things like a major medical expense, a major home repair, an appliance repair, or an appliance replacement an unexpected car repair. It wouldn't cover things like oil changes and regular maintenance, but you know, um, I don't know, you get, you suddenly get a flat tire and you need to have a tire replaced and that might be a few hundred dollars or you know, um, things like that, or you need a part replaced or that wasn't expected, normal maintenance. Um, a pet emergency, you know, your dog like eats something weird that someone left out and now it needs to have some kind of surgery or things like that and um, most importantly to cover the loss of a job if someone ends up out of work you have this emergency fund available to help you get through those times so that's what an emergency fund is it's a it's a cushion it's a big cushion ultimately if you can get to that ultimate savings goal that you have there so that you don't have to worry about any of these things happening of course you don't want them to happen and um, you don't want to have to spend the money on those things, but just having the peace of mind knowing that if something does happen, it's not going to cause you a financial disaster, which is what happens to many of us when these things happen because most people do not have a fully funded emergency fund, and there's quite a lot of people that have no savings at all. So that's why this is really important to talk about. So um, how much should you have in your emergency fund? So if you have debt that you're paying off, um, not your mortgage, but like if you have a credit card debt that you're working on or a student loan debt or a car debt, things like that, that you're trying to get paid off, um, you're not going to fully, well, it's up to you how you handle it. Everyone can decide on their own how they want to 
if they want to fund their emergency fund bigger or whatever um, in the you know other than these steps that I'm saying but typically um, when you read different advice from different finance people they suggest that you get the debt paid off first before you build this big emergency fund but you do still want to start a small emergency fund of say maybe five hundred dollars up to a couple thousand dollars whatever you feel comfortable with and the reason you want to do that even though you are still trying to put money towards debt is because you want to have that small emergency fund there so that if you um, have an emergency a small emergency pop up you don't want to then have to put it on your credit card because you had no resource to pay that bill and now you're adding more debt when you were trying to get out of debt and it just kind of creates that keeps that debt cycle going so you want to have something set aside that you feel like could cover most of those smaller type emergencies so that's going to be your starting point so um, you know and if you once you have that built up whatever you know decide whatever amount you want to set up as your start emergency fund get that saved up and um, once you have that if you do wind up using it your first step needs to be to replenish it so like say if you're making debt payments say if you're making like uh, $50 a month extra debt payments and you want to build up a $500 emergency fund and you only have that $50 a month extra that can go into that savings account well for the next 10 months you need to put the $50 a month not to debt but into your emergency fund you want to build your emergency fund first then say after that 10 months happens um, you get a a tire like your tire gets I don't know you hit like something major on the road and your whole tire needs to be replaced and you spend three hundred dollars of your emergency fund well now for the next four months you're still not going to be making any extra debt payments you're going to be um, rebuilding up your emergency fund back to that five hundred dollars and that can happen and it's kind of frustrating and annoying but at the end of the day you still have that five hundred dollars now and you have at least been making the minimum payments on your credit card so you are still making progress on your credit card, not the progress that you want wanted to be making, but you're still making progress on your debt or whatever you're trying to pay off if you have debt. Um, and if you don't have debt, um, then you know we'll move on to the next step on how much you wanna save up into your emergency fund. But either way, just make it a priority to keep that built up and replenish it when you do use it. Because if you don't replenish it, then it kind of defeats the purpose of of having it it's not for one emergency it's for always having it for when these emergencies um, come up so it's kind of like rather than putting it on a card and paying the card back you're paying yourself back um, to put that money back into your fund so um, once you're out of debt and you're trying to determine how much you need to have an emergency fund most um, people say you should have three to six months of expenses in your emergency fund so when you calculate an amount that represents three to six months of expenses you're going to look at that number and be like holy cow that's a huge amount of money how am i ever going to be able to save that up for an emergency fund i know i did i thought like okay that seems almost impossible so you definitely need to calculate that amount because you want to know what your ultimate goal is but don't let that number keep you from getting started set small goals maybe set goals for 500 at a time every time you hit 500 nice you just have $500 now extra that you didn't have before because the it, you can build up your savings over time and the more you're able to put away the better off you are if you have zero you're much worse off than if you have a thousand you might not have 12,000 or whatever your three to six month number is but you have a thousand that's better than nothing it's better than zero so don't let that big number overwhelm you but I would definitely still calculate it because it is an ultimate goal that you want to reach but you definitely want to set up smaller goals in the meantime to work on and just keep building over time as much as you can so when you're gonna decide okay so people are like well three to six months which is it so when you're thinking about how much you want that ultimate goal to be the things that you want to think about are do you have a family member with a medical issue that might require an occasional um, unexpected cost 
Um, do you have an older vehicle that might need an occasional large repair? Or a car that might need to be replaced in the future? Um, how stable is your employment? What's the likelihood that you could experience a period of unemployment in the future? Though, I mean, if, if you have, a, a say, a contracted job that's kind of not always, um, you know, you don't really always know if the work's going to be there, then you definitely want to have more in an emergency fund than if you have a job that you've been at for 20 years and the company's moving along and you get a weekly paycheck and you're an important employee and you're not, not that you can never lose your job. I mean, anything can happen in any situation, but what's the likelihood? Is it likely that that's going to continue and you're going to keep getting that paycheck and you're going to stay there until you retire? Well, then you might not need as much as in the emergency fund. That's kind of your decision based on your lifestyle and what the likelihood is that you might wind up needing to use it for unemployment. So, I mean, when you're determining um, what that monthly expense is, so you say, okay, um, my job's fairly stable. Um, I don't really think I'm going to be out of work. I don't have any major medical issues, but I'd still like to have a little extra cushion. So say you think, okay, I think I want to go with four months. I might not necessarily need that much extra, but I'd be more comfortable if I have a little extra cushion. So I'm going to go with four months. So now what? How do you de decide what that number is? So when you're determining your monthly expenses to calculate your emergency fund, you're going to be looking at things like your housing costs. What do you have to pay for your mortgage um, or rent? Uh, what do you have to pay for property taxes? What do you have to pay for utilities? What are your insurance premiums? Your homeowner's insurance, your life insurance, your automobile insurance, any types of insurances that you have, those need to be included in your emergency fund monthly expense number. Your cell phone. Um, you know, you need to be able to communicate with people, so you have to consider your cell phone bill or your home phone, one or the other. I think most people have a cell phone now. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody mostly has a cell phone now that's listening to this podcast. But either way, if you don't, a home phone, same thing. Um, transportation. What are you going to need to keep gas in your car um, just for regular, you know, and, and regular car maintenance, like, um, you know, your, your gas and regular oil changes, things like that. Um, food for yourself and for your pets like how much do you need to spend to keep yourself and your animals fed if you have pets and then your minimum debt payments and if you have anything else that you know is like a major important bill that you have to pay each month those are what you want to consider in your monthly expense number to calculate how much you want your emergency fund to be you don't want to include things like cable TV eating out travel or vacations entertainment. If you're in an emergency situation and you're out of a job, those are the first things to get cut immediately. So those you, you would not be paying those if you're living off your emergency fund. You would immediately cancel cable. You would stop all travel plans. You would stop eating out. Um, and you're not going to be going out to the movies or like going to see a concert if you're out of work and living off your emergency fund. So you, do, you don't include those. We're just going to cover all of the basic important expenses that are required to be paid to keep you going. So once you have your number determined, again, it's going to be a big number and it definitely could feel overwhelming for some and it could feel almost unattainable. But that's, that's not the important part. That's the ultimate goal. That is ideally where you would like to be. If you never get there, you never get there. But if you get there halfway or a quarter of the way, you're still way better off than if you have none of that saved. So if you haven't created a budget yet, for not for your emergency fund, but for your general living finances, for your money coming in, money going out, that's gotta be your first step. You'll have very, you're gonna have difficulty um, trying to build an emergency fund if you haven't yet established your budget because your budget is gonna let you know how much money you have that you can afford to put into the emergency fund. That's really important to know because you don't wanna start putting $100 a month into an emergency fund and at the end of the month you're like, oh, I didn't have enough money to make my uh, gas bill payment, so now I have to pull money back out of the emergency fund to make this payment. That's not going to work. 
that's going to just cause ups and downs. You're going to have no momentum. You won't really know how close you're going to get to approaching your goals because you won't know how much longer it's going to even take you to hit little goals because you won't even have any idea if once you put the money in, it can stay in there. So if you don't have a budget done yet for your monthly income and expenses, that's going to have to be your first step. I do have another episode on um, creating budget. If you're interested, that might help you. Or obviously, there's many resources on helping you set up a budget. But it's going to be really important to know how much you can afford to put into the account each month. So if you, um, once you have that part done, what you want to do is decide that amount. Like I said, whatever that amount is, you're going to put it in the account every single month and keep building it. Then if you get any unexpected money, like say if you get a tax refund, or if you get a birthday gift, or a Christmas gift, or any other time that something might happen where you come across any additional money, your priority is to put it in that emergency fund until you hit your main large goal. So if you're not at your fully funded goal, you don't want to take that money and just kind of do whatever with it. You want to put it in that emergency fund because you're basically giving that gift to yourself of having that money there for when things happen and saving yourself the stress of not knowing where the money's gonna come from. So also, oh, so say too, another place you can find money. Say if you budgeted, I don't know, um, $150 for like, well, today's Father's Day when I'm recording this. So say Father's Day, you budgeted $150 for Father's Day things. Maybe you're gonna buy some, extra um, drinks and snacks and um, maybe order in food or go out to dinner or whatever. So say you budget $150 for Father's Day and you only wind up spending $100. Well, if you already budgeted for $150 and you had that money available in your budget and you came in $50 less than you expected, take that $50 and stick it in your emergency fund. You were going to spend it on stuff anyway and if you didn't, don't wind up just going and blowing it now on something else, like ordering out on Thursday night or whatever. Use it to put in your emergency fund. You had that money set aside anyway. So just really look and find anywhere you can find those little extra dollars and get them in that account because it will all help. All those little bits help. I've had times where I had, you know, looking at my weekly budget and I might have a little bit, like a small amount extra left in the budget that I didn't think I was going to spend for the week. And I would just go on my phone and transfer 20 bucks into the emergency fund because it's like, hey, I, I could see I'm going to have a little bit left. Do I want to go hit like um, Target and pick up some like extra junk food for the kids or do I want to stick $20 in the emergency fund? So just those little things. I mean, if you do that five times, that's an extra hundred bucks. It's in your emergency fund now. So just look and find anywhere you can find anything excess. And if you don't find anything excess, you just stick with your monthly deposits that you determine that you can fit into your budget. So that's that's what you want to do to, to build it up. Just find those dollars if you can find them. And if you can't, make sure you stick to your monthly amount and just be Um, determined to put that money in there every month and you'll probably find that you will find some other dollars here and there that you can wind up just sticking in there once you get really motivated about building the account so where to keep your emergency fund so you want your emergency fund in just a regular checking or savings account it should be something that you can easily access you don't want it in like a CD or um, like an investment account where the value can go up and down this is just money that's not for investment it's just there for an emergency fund you want it to be easily accessible you don't want to have to close out a cd so that you can get the money if you need it two days from now so um you know one suggestion on a good place to put it is one of these like high yield savings accounts um they're usually um on like online banks like capital one has them um, I think Wealthfront might have them. I don't know. If you, if you do a search for, for like the best high yield savings accounts, they'll usually list them by um, interest rate amount so you can see who has the highest interest rate and they'll show what their um, minimum balances are. If any, I always look for one that has no minimum balance and has the best interest rate for a no minimum balance account. Um, but you know, you could do some research online and see um, what accounts are available and what the interest rates are and what you, um, where you would like to keep your money. You can also even just, you know, if you're not 
that concerned about the interest rate, it, it doesn't honestly make that much of a difference. I just always feel like I want to get the highest interest rate I can. But honestly, the interest rates are kind of low anyway on savings accounts. So it's not like you're going to make a huge amount of money. You might make 10 cents instead of 5 cents as you're starting to build it up. So, um, you know, you just want to make sure it's a separate account. It definitely should not be part of your checking account. It's got to be something where that you need to go to that account and pull the money out for the emergency. So, you know, you can also even just open up a savings account wherever you have your checking so that you can have them attached so you could transfer the money over to your checking um, usually immediately if you need to. Like if, if it's within the same bank, you could usually immediately transfer the money over and the second you transfer it, it's available in your checking account. So that's really all I have to talk about today for emergency funds. Um, it's just kind of exciting for me to talk about it because I just think it is such a huge um, importance for people. And like I said, there's so many of us that do not have this and have never really been taught it to, to do this savings, um, emergency savings. It can be such a huge lifesaver. And I get so excited about the thought of actually completing this goal someday. I, I feel like someday I will. Um, but even just working at it, like I said, as much as you can get saved, it's better than nothing. So set little goals and um, just look and see where you can find anything extra and get that emergency fund build. And don't use debt when you have that emergency because you'll have some money set aside that you can use your own money that's saved up to pay for those expenses and then just replenish it. It'll be really, it'll feel really good if you can get to that point where you can start to use your own savings to cover those emergencies as they come up. So that's all for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope it's helpful to you. Um, if you have any feedback or have suggestions for episode topics, usually what I do is every Monday I have like a topic that I talk about, like for example, the emergency fund today. Um, so I try and do like a, a general topic episode at least every Monday. Sometimes I'll throw in an extra one during the week and then I do like my weekly grocery haul and my meal plan and my zone cleaning episodes. Um, but those are kind of like a standard. They're not like a different topic. They're just kind of updating on those areas and what, what we're looking at, what we're working on for the week. So if you have any um, suggestions for this or just suggestions for the show as a whole, would you like to hear it done differently? Anything. I would really, really love to hear your feedback because I, I want to be as helpful as I can. So you can reach me. Um, you can message me on Facebook if you go to facebook.com slash Lola's Frugal Life. You can send me a message there. You could like the page. Um, you could um, join my private listeners group, which I created for this podcast. There's a link to the user group on that Facebook page. Or you can go directly to facebook.com slash group slash Lola's Frugal Life and submit a request to join. I will add you. There's only a couple of us in there right now, but it's got to start somewhere. Just like the emergency savings, it's got to start small. So, um, but I'm hoping that it'll build up to a nice group of people over time and we could talk about different topics that we talk about on the episodes. So, oh, also subscribe if you'd like to. Um, give me a review, that'd be really great, or a rating. Um, anyway, that's that. So, thank you so much for listening. I really hope you have a great day, and thanks again.